Now, let's let the prophetic word come forth. You ready? All right. Speaking of reading, this is what I read. By the way, I found out something about Nevada in this water shortage. You know that the, the uh, Clark County recycles 100% of the water you use indoors? Did you know that? And they're trying to figure out how to recycle 100% of the water you use outdoors. And the problem with Lake Mead, low on water, is California and Arizona. They're wasting it. Uh, they could do the same thing that we did. So I used to have a thing, you know, turn the faucet off, we can't waste water. And then I found out they recycle 100% of the water that goes down your drain. 100%. Which is amazing that they can do that. So I just want you to let you know that. So now I don't, not quick to shut off the water as I was. Amen. So I got some words here, more than one. But before I do that, I want to say this about the giving for the uh, building expansion. When my son announced this, uh, I talked to Mar Margo, my wife, and uh, God instantly gave me a figure. And we decided on the 31st of October we would... Uh, come together and decide what figure that God has gave us. I did not tell her. She did not tell me. So I said, okay, tell me what your figure was. She said, no, you tell me first. So I told her. I told her, and she goes, that's the same number I got. And from the time we said we we're going to give that amount to the time we got it, we got enough that didn't cost us a penny, technically. So it's amazing how God does that. So if you haven't Ask God for a number yet. Ask him. Set a time you're going to give it and watch God give it to you before you need it. Or sometimes he gives it to you afterwards. Okay? So anyway, I got a message here, but I want to, I want to do, add, add to this. And so first one was so short. One of the things I do on Wednesday night is I teach through the word. Right now we're in Romans. And we're in Romans chapter 13, and I taught on it last week. I'm going to teach on it again this week. I also decided this way ahead of time. Romans 13, 1 and 2 says, Let every sub person, let every person be in subjection to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are established by God. Therefore, he who resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation unto themselves. 1 John 3, verse 4 tells you what sin is. Anybody know what the one-word definition of sin is? What's the one-word definition of sin? Nope. It's in 1 John 3, verse 4. What is it? Somebody want to look it up real quick? One-word definition of sin starts with an L. Lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Lawlessness means a condition without law, either through ignorance or or violating it. In the state of Washington, which I didn't know this, I found out because I got a ticket, if there's any road in the state of California that doesn't have a speed limit sign, the speed limit is 35 miles an hour. So I'm driving, I go someplace off one of the back roads in Washington State, and I go down the main highway, and I pull over, and I think, well, I'll just, I got to drive back home, I'll just take a scenic route. So I'm going down the road 45 miles an hour, this cop pulls up behind me and pulls me over and says, you're speeding. I said, I'm not speeding. He said, you should know this. If there's no, I said, there's no speed limit sign posted. He said, you should know this. If there's no speed limit sign in the state of Washington, the speed limit is 35 miles an hour. You were doing 45. I said, well, I didn't know. They said, well, ignorance is no excuse. That was lawlessness. I didn't know I was being lawless. Okay. It took someone in authority to show me that I was been lawless. And it cost me some money. <laughs> Tickets aren't cheap in the state of Washington. Okay? They have this thing there. If you get a speeding ticket, if you go to court and you pay like two or three times above that, it doesn't go on your record. It's a, it's a racket. You can get your, you cannot have a ticket on your record. I know a guy, I work with a guy, got speeding tickets constantly. He had money, he just paid them off. Never, never showed up in his record. So it never affected his insurance. So sin is lawlessness. And one of the things I want to talk about on Wednesday night, I'm going to tell you this. There has been things going on in our church. I don't know if you notice them, 
But I think they deal with the subject of lawlessness, and I'm going to talk about them on Wednesday night, because governing authority, one person is in complete authority in this church, and that is my son. He has 100% absolute authority given to him under God. I have authority as a teacher. Tony has authority as the office of prophet. The different ones have authority, youth pastor, children's pastor, different ones with authority. And the thing about the, what I've been noticing, and this is not why I believe God's about ready to do explosion, because we have had ignorance done, not by us, but by people who come in our church who think that what they're doing is God's will, and they're rebellious because they're lawless, because they're not submitting to the authority that God has ordained. I had a rule when I pastored. If somebody came into my church, I don't care what position they had in another church, my rule was you had to wait six months before I used you. Now, I didn't make them wait six months, but if they submitted to that, that told me that they were part of the house. So then I could use them. It was kind of ironic. If I told them I, I can't use you for six months, some of them would just never, you never see them again. Well, I don't want those in a, in a, in a position. Okay, so I, I, that's what I came up with in the Holy Spirit. So those that submitted, I said, well, great, now I can use you. A couple of weeks later, maybe if the Holy Spirit let me, I, I'd start using them. Okay, so we're going to talk about that on Wednesday night, and I bring this up because we had another incident even this morning that you don't know about, which I'm not going to talk about. But I'll talk about that on Wednesday night. So if you want to hear what I'm going to say, come on Wednesday night, okay? Now, for the message. God gave me a, a series of thoughts and messages. Today is November the 14th. You got 48 days away from 2022. It's a time of the year when I begin to shift my mind, and we all be, literally begin to do this. We, we begin to look at the end of the year, and psychologically, we, work, we operate based on that premises. When New Year's turns, we look at the whole year that's ahead of us. We look with expectations. We make resolutions, which is what I believe what the Holy Spirit is really the one that does that, moves upon people to change things in their life. I believe it's a move of the Holy Spirit. So as I've said before, the steadfast love of the Lord is new every morning. God's love for you is new every single morning. I believe it's also new for every single month, and I'm uniquely new for every single beginning of every year. The Bible begins with new. God created all things new. It ends with new. Uh, Revelations 21.5, the book of Revelations, for your information, is the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ given to him by his Father. A lot of people forget that about the book of Revelations. That is what it is. It's what the Father revealed to Jesus, and that's how we should look at Revelations. But in the end of Revelations, God makes another statement. He says, Revelations 21.5, Behold, I make all things new. Okay, Isaiah 43.19 tells us that God is a God of new beginnings. God is continuously doing Something new in your life. New, okay? If you need a new in your life, you need to believe that it's coming. You need to reach out for it, and it will come because God is a God of new, okay? Our economy is not world's economy. If gas goes to $10 a gallon, God's going to give me money to pay for that gas for $10 a gallon. Okay, God's going to do that. And maybe I don't need to drive as much as I do. Okay, and it is a proven fact that if you can say something socially, which is what the news does, you can create what you speak, even though it's not true. You can say there's going to be a shortage. There's a shortage. All, all they got to do is have some news guy stand up and say there's going to be a, a, a toilet paper shortage. There's going to be a toilet paper shortage. Why? Because everybody's going to run to the store to buy toilet paper because they want to get it before everybody else gets it. So you can create. That's what, that's what communism did in Russia. You can create. That's what Hitler did in Germany. 
You can create situations just by publicly speaking it. Well, the same thing is true in the church. You can create things. You can say things to people in a church that create situations that are not true. I can say up here and say, oh, the world's falling apart. Everything is horrible. The economy is this, blah, I go do all that. I can get you so depressed, you have to drag yourself out of here. Okay? I would create a world for you where you see everything. You go to the store and they just happen to not have it on the shelf because they haven't stocked it yet and they got tons of it in the back and you think, oh, that's what... Pastor Wayne said, that's what's going to happen. There is a shortage. There's all these things happen, and I'm going to be selfish, and I'm going to start hoarding all my stuff for myself, okay, which creates a shortage in itself. As my son said the first service, if God tells you to go out and stock up a lot of food, go out and stock up a lot of food. But if he doesn't, don't, okay? Let the Lord guide you. So God does not want to repair what you already have. God wants everything new, okay? Don't seek a repair of the old. Let it go, and this is a good time to do that. Let it go. You got a month and a half to do the things that I'm going to, some of the things I'm going to be mentioning. And one of the things I do is I seek God for a new year through, I started in December, seeking for a word from the Lord. I don't ask myself what kind of year it will be. I ask the Holy Spirit to show me what I can expect and what kind of year it can be. And I ask with my spiritual ears so I can hear what the Lord says. And I look at the Word with my spiritual eyes so I can see what the Word says. As I said, I take the whole month of December. I seek the face of the Lord for a word for the coming year for Mark and I so we can run with it. Now, the Bible is full of images. An image is a word that makes a concrete thing, such as a river or dry land or a tent. I love these people that say something, for example, the word rapture, okay? Now, we're going to get a view of the rapture, but the word rapture, as people tell me, is not in the Bible. What's well, not? Okay. Catching away is in the Bible. Okay. When someone says to me the word rapture, I form a picture in my mind. That shows what I feel that a rapture is, okay? The purpose of the word is so that we all understand each other. If I said you look good today, what kind of picture forms in, she look, doesn't she look good today? What kind of picture forms in your mind? Huh? A positive one. So the word brought an image, and that's what the Bible is. When you read the Bible, Words form images. When you read the word run, it literally means to run the race that God has laid before you, okay? Tent refers to the anointing that the Holy Spirit has put upon you. And Isaiah says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch out, spare not, strengthen your pegs. He gives you instructions what to do. I don't think this is going to be 15 minutes like the other. He gives you instructions what to do, and you do them, okay? Now, going back to the word run. Hebrews 12, 1 tells us, run with patience the race that is set before you. What does that tell us? It tells us that we do not select the course. God does. I don't want to select my own course. I want God to select it. And what keeps us on God's course for 2022? It's very simple, the things, things that keeps us on the course for all the other years we live. I've served the Lord for 64 years. And the, the word is Hebrew 12, 2, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. And each year I do something else. I ask God to show me what I have picked up in 2021 that will hinder me so I can go forward into 2022 without those hindrances. I am to lay aside those hindrances, which means stop doing what I've been doing, the weights, things that are not sin, but things that hinder or prevent me from doing what God wants. There are things that we can do in our lives that are not sin, yet they hinder us from serving God the way he wants. I have talked to people who say, well, that's not a sin. What well, doesn't matter? Is it hindering you 
from doing what God is asking you to do. Lay aside that hindrance and every sin that so easily besets you. You want to be setting sin is? It's a sin that you enjoy. It's a sin that you like. You're in love with it. You're serving God, but you're keeping that sin in your life, okay? It, it, it actually benefits you, so you think. It's a darling little sin that some people take an attitude, it can't be that bad. That's one of the things I'm going to, reason I'm going to refer to church government on Wednesday night. It's a sin that actually people defend, sometimes even look forward to doing them, and they don't see them as sins, okay? But they're, they're things that easily beset you, and the it's talking about running and besetting. It's like when you run your race, first off, the Hebrews indicates that sin is running behind you. You're running ahead of it, and sin is running behind you. So if you stop running, it's going to catch up with you. But it also refers to the fact you're running a race, and some guy's there kind of hiding, and he throws out a line that you cannot see, and it wraps around your legs, and you stumble. Okay? You're wrapped up. You're stumbled. You've got to remove that hindrance. So you can pick yourself up and keep going on your race. Okay? So that's one of the things you need to do between now and the end of the year is ask God to show you anything that's hindering you from doing what he wants to fulfill in your life. Ask God, is there any little sin that I actually enjoy and, Lord, cause me to hate it and remove it from my life? Because if you hate it, you ain't going to do it. In seeking God for a word for the coming year, Normally, sometimes God gives me an image, sometimes he gives me a scripture, sometimes he gives me a word. And since this is my message to you for the end of the year, I'm giving it, okay? Example, in 2014, the Lord told Margo and I it will be a year of amazement, and it was a year of amazement. We were amazed that all the things God did for us that year, so much so I said, okay, Lord, can you just kind of continue in 2015? We got a word one year, Psalm 65, 11, I will crown your year with goodness and your path will drip with abundance. And guess what? It was a good year and we did have abundance. When Margaret and I were praying about moving down here to Henderson, the Lord gave me this word, Isaiah 58, 11. I wasn't looking for it. It was in July at this time, so to December. I was reading through Isaiah, which is one of my favorite books, and I'm going to read what he said to me and I'm going to personalize it. I, the Lord, will continually guide you and satisfy your desires in scorched places. <laughs> now, that doesn't refer here, does it? Scorched places can, is an image. It can be a spiritual image or a physical image. I talk it to be physical. And give strength to your bones, which I need, and you will be like a well-watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. That was the word we had to come down here. Okay? Images in the Bible have a positive and a negative meaning. As a child of God, the negative meaning, if you're serving the Lord like you should, do not apply to you. So I seek a word through prayer, and I also seek through study. In the few weeks we have left until 2022, I look at the number 22. Now, 22 is double of 11. For those of you in math that don't know that. <clears throat> 11, 11 is a letter of blessing. Okay? So, 22 is a letter of double blessing. Okay? <clears throat> so, one of the things I felt the Lord said was, if you walk the path that he has set for you for the coming year, the blessings that I have promised to give you for 2022, I will double. I will double my blessings for you in 2022 if you walk the path that I have set before you. <coughs> so I'm very excited about 2022. Can't you tell? See, I have the gift. I have a, I'm a prophet. I have the gift of prophecy. I'm also a prophet. But again, going back to authority, I come under authority of the one who holds the office of prophet in this church. Anybody know who that is? She has the authority. My prophetic ministry is to submit to her prophetic ministry because why? Because she 
holds the office. You cannot come in this church and prophesy at any time you feel like it, okay, because you have to submit to the office, the one in the office of prophet, okay? That's, that's one of the things about government. We have people that want to come into our church who want to do their own thing. You can't do that. You have positions, and you are to honor the positions because the time may come when somebody, you may be in that position. David honored the position of King Saul. Why? Because he knew the day would come. He One, he did it for all reasons, but he also had in his mind that someday he would be in that position. If you don't honor a position of somebody else and you think that you would do a better job, you might be able to do a better job. But that's not, that's not the point. If you don't honor that position, when you get in that position, people aren't going to honor you in that position. What you give, you get back. Pressed down, shaken over, running together, so men pour into your bosom. Okay? You give forgiveness, you give forgiveness. So if you have the gift of prophecy, doesn't mean you're a prophet. Okay? My prophecy, as I said, come, normally comes in the form of an image. So what God gave me that I'm going to give you and when I get a, a picture, I get it very clear, very colorful, very distinct. I never forget them. I got pictures that God gave me over people that I haven't seen in 20 years. And if I run into them, I can see that image all over again, over that person. Okay? So on October 30th, at the beginning, and maybe this is a word that God has given Mark and I for 2022. We're going to pray about it. I saw a rapid moving river. The water was white capped. It was kind of flowing very fast, like over the rocks. In the river were three boats. In the boats were people. Christopher's family was in one boat. Troy's family was in another boat. It's the other son. And Margaret and I were in the third boat. The name of the river, which I knew instantly, was the river of blessing. The river of blessing, okay? And the image I got that night was, as I said, our three families going down this river, and I I'm, I'm also believe that God wants to apply this to you, okay? As we sped rapidly down the river, the water began to flow faster and faster. And then I heard 2022 will be a year of blessing like you've never seen if you remain in the river, which I forgot to say the first part. Get in the river, okay? My attention turned to the dry and barren banks. The image of dry land is the image of lack, an image of falsehood, a land without truth. No rain or blessing falls on the dry land, okay? So you have a choice. You can trust in yourself and your own wisdom and spiritual things for 2022, and you'll live on the dry land. Or you could get into a boat and say, God, I'm going to go down this river of blessing. I'm going to let you take me, take it where you want to take me. So if you decide to cast off into the river of blessing, then hold on to your hats because you're going to have an exciting ride. The river will bless you in ways you cannot imagine going to bring abundance in new levels of God's grace in your life. And another thing I got that I believe for 2022 is I felt the Lord say it's going to be a year that the hard times will end. I don't know what that means. It's not my job to interpret it. But I'm telling you, if you get in that river of blessing, the hard times for your life, whatever they are, God promises they are going to end, okay? Sometime in 2022, God is going to do an alignment. I don't know what it will be, but I sense this is coming. I don't know about you, but that excites me because I'm going into 2022 in a boat, going down the river of blessing, promises that God is going to do. God's going to get rid of some hard times, and God's going to redo an alignment. So that's a word that I feel is ma was mainly for me, but I'm giving it to you 
You grasp a hold of it. You say, God, I, that, I want that word. You don't tell God how to do it. You don't tell God to bless you in a certain way. You just take the word that you're going to be in the river of blessing, and you just sit back, enjoy the ride, and let God bless you as God wants to bless you. Okay? That's what you do. And prepare yourself to be aligned. So receive the word that I've implanted in you. Amen?